What I think what we can tell you that we're working on a big thing for November. Um, we cannot actually release or give you any um, details on it, but I think it's going to be great. It's going to be a bit of shake up because it's something which is not there at the moment. Anywhere. Anywhere. So, um, yeah, we're really excited to see <laughs> that. Um, yeah, hopefully it works out. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, uh, it's, it'll surprise some people. I interviewed Jorg and Mike last year, the way they described this secretive project, I was thinking an in-house chronograph, maybe a manufacturer dual time movement, but they said things like, it's not there at the moment, anywhere, and it'll surprise some people. Dual time movements and chronographs, they don't really fit. I'm sure those are challenging to produce, but neither of those guesses would have been anywhere near as surprising as this bel canto. Bel Canto, Spanish for the canto. Nope, wait, that's not right. It means beautiful singing or beautiful song in Italian. Bello Canto. And it's because this watch makes noise, it chimes. And I'm going to show you what, how, when, and why. But first, let's hear it. Watch the hammer in the bottom left of the dial. Three, two, one. Wow, majestic. Okay, well, let's try that again. You probably already know, any mechanical watch that intentionally makes noise is pretty rare. I've had a few 7750 chronographs that sounded like a broken pencil sharpener, but those don't count. Real chiming watches are rare because, first, they're usually very complicated and thus extremely expensive. And second, they're also rare because, well, maybe they're not so useful? I think Christopher Ward may have addressed both of these issues with this watch. Let's find out. First, the facts. This watch is the first edition of the Bel Canto with the blue dial that the brand refers to as Azuro. These are gone, sold out in minutes, but Christopher Ward has already been taking pre-orders for new dial colors and even options with bracelets. Purple on a bracelet, man, shoot. On a leather strap, the Bel Canto watches list for $3,750, and on the upcoming titanium bracelet, $4,210. That's right, it's a titanium watch, grade 5. It has a 41mm diameter case that's 48mm long and 13mm thick. It has 22mm lugs and a water resistance of 30 meters. I do really want to know how this thing sounds underwater, but I guess I'll have to wait for the Bel Canto Diver, which will probably, and should probably, never ever happen. The Bel Canto uses an automatic movement with 38 hours of power reserve. Plenty more on that in just a minute. On the strap, the watch weighs 78 grams, which is nothing. On a bracelet, it'll weigh 113 grams, which is still nothing for a watch with a bracelet. Between the light weight and the 41 millimeter size, the watch feels and looks good on my 7 inch wrist. That's just under 18 centimeters or about the wavelength of a 1.96 gigahertz frequency which is way out of the range of human hearing, but if it was audible, it would be a B musical note, so there's that. But the wearability of this watch is really not what it's all about. For other watches, sure, how it looks and feels on the wrist might be a top priority, but that's for normal watches. There are hundreds of dive watches and pilot watches and sporty chronographs, but there ain't nothing like this. So what I'm trying to say is that if you like this watch, the size is way down on the list of considerations. But thankfully, it's a pretty good size and weight. A lot of people can wear this comfortably. As for the main event, let's start simply. The bel canto chimes once at the top of the hour. That's it. One ding at 1 o'clock, one at 2 o'clock, one ding at 11 o'clock. And this is mostly how the bel canto can be 50 to 100 times cheaper than many chiming watches, for real, like $400,000 to $800,000. The most famous type of chiming watch is called a minute repeater. A minute repeater actually reads out the current time with a series of strikes. First it does the hours, and then it does the minutes and quarters, like one chime for 15 minutes, two chimes for 30, and then it chimes out the remaining minutes. Minute repeaters are perhaps the most complicated complication. 
They're a crazy feat of watchmaking. I don't really know why someone would use one. I mean, they can take like 20 seconds for the time to be dinged out, dung, dunged out, dung out. Owning a minute repeater is as much about telling time as posting a YouTube comment is about having a civilized and insightful conversation with peers. But this bel canto is no minute repeater. It's much simpler from an engineering perspective and much simpler for the wearer. It's a pretty clever innovation. In 2011, Christopher Ward worked with Johannes Janke to develop a jumping hour module that would work with ETA and Salida movements. The clever movement swapped an hour hand for a disc that instantly jumped when the hour changed. And that same engineering is used in this bel canto. But instead of an hour disc instantly rotating, the hammer hits the bell. As the minute hand moves forward, a snail cam turns. It's just below the center of the dial. Then as the hour progresses, the snail cam turns and forces the hammer to pull back away from the bell, which is the long metal piece that kind of wraps around the periphery of the dial. And finally, at the top of the hour, the snail cam lets the hammer drop and strike. I love that this is all on display through the front of the dial. One of the things I really enjoy about mechanical watches is that if you look at them work, it all makes sense, and yet they are far too ingenious for me to ever have conceived of. Another trick is the button at 4 o'clock. That's how the chiming can be turned on or off. Pressing the button rotates a different cam and disengages the chiming system. It also turns the red arrow away from the wave icon, showing you that it's off. And I wish I would have remembered to do this a couple nights, because I definitely heard this chiming at around 2 a.m., then 3 a.m., then 4. It's really hard to get me out of bed. Sleep is where I do my best work. Not that the chiming is terribly loud, it's not. It's actually pretty perfect volume for when it's on the wrist. And wearing this has surprised me, and here's why. Like I said with the minute repeater watches, they don't seem all that useful for time telling, at least for me. For proving that you have more money than God, sure, they're great for that, but telling the time, nah, I don't think so. And I expected similar from this bel canto, but I gotta tell you, I really like hearing the time once an hour. It's been weirdly useful. I have a lot of meetings, half of my work day is meetings, and half of my personal day is trying to get a child to do things on a schedule. So to be suddenly told, yo, it's 2pm, it's time to do that thing you didn't want to do, it's been kind of great for me. And yes, I could set my phone or my Apple Watch or a G-Shock to do all that, but none of them alarm with the same analog pleasantness. It's been a joy. And I can't say the same about actually reading the time from the very difficult and very low contrast dial. It's not so tough when the watch is sitting on a desk, but when it's on your wrist and you want to see the time at a quick glance, it gets a little awkward. And I guess I appreciate that the hands and markers have loom because this is actually easier to read in the dark than in the light. And I don't have a great solution for that low legibility. I'm sure there are engineering limitations to the placement of the dial. And I really like how all the elements look, how they're laid out and proportioned, and that there's space to see the blue sunray dial. The dial is finished in a way so that the rays emanate from the center of the time-telling dial and not from the center of the watch, which is really good. The elements under the sapphire crystal are very pretty. A close inspection can tell a watch nerd that this is not a high luxury watch. There are some high horology finishing touches that you won't find here, and that's totally fine. This costs less than $4,000. I realize that's a lot of money. Don't spend that on a watch. Do as I say, not as I do. But, you know, $4,000 for this attention to detail and this innovation? Pretty, pretty good. The case is also nicely finished. That's something that Christopher Ward has really been excelling at. Crisp finishing with interesting angles and polishing and brushing. And the back of the watch has a kind of sound motif, which is unnecessary but appreciated, just like the watch itself, just like I aspire to be one day. I've already got the unnecessary part covered. And that's the Christopher Ward Bel Canto. Do I like it? Yes, very much. Do I think it's worthy of the hype? Well, until this week, I didn't know there was hype, but it's definitely worthy of a lot of people's attention. Is it going to change the watch industry? No, I don't think so. Is it going to change the number in people's bank accounts? Definitely. Will they regret it? I don't think so. How many questions can I ask and answer in a row? Seven. One for each inch of my wrist. Are we done yet? Only until the next video.